Fantastic cars, the bug-eyed sprites, the, uh, the Healy 100s and the big 3000s and we've got some and all of those in fact in the international tribute race here and many of the top uh, international drivers uh, um, from the UK. We've got Dennis Welsh and John Chatham, of course locally Peter uh, Hopwood leads the local brigade and uh, it's going to be quite a race. Let's uh, pick up the action right at the start. Let's now take a look at the starting grid in the Donald Healy International Tribute on the front row. Dennis Welsh from England and beside him Neil Dunn. On the second row, Sydney's Peter Hopwood sharing it with Richard Carter. Over now to row three, starting out of five is Rob Rowland. Paul Freestone beside him. The fourth row, George Forbes and Colin Dodds. And rounding out the top ten for you, Warren James and also Jeff Leak. This is a real blast from the past. 38 cars in total to contest this race varying designs of Austin Healy's and we're now just seconds away from a start watch the Englishman on the right hand side of your screen front row of the grid he really got a gun start when they said go fairly slow to begin was Neil Dunn on the outside of the front row we're going to see the Englishman really put a big gap in them as he approaches the first corner first time round and up mountain straight they charge we'll just watch them carefully all 38 of them plenty of tyre smoke and a little bit of carnage, but in the main, all getting through the first corner safely, Alan Moffat, and you'd love to be out there driving one of these, I'm sure. Uh, I have always admired these cars. Uh, I, I really do. I thought they're great. They were first introduced in 1952 at the Earl's Court Motor Show in, in London, and they were an instant success and came to Bathurst as early as 1954. But this is uh, a great treat to see uh, the best Heelys in Australia and overseas. Uh, Dennis Welsh has this car in Europe is hated, absolutely hated, by all Ferrari drivers because he's able to clean them up at most of the European circuits, even though uh, not quite the prowess of most Ferraris. His race boasting uh, drivers and cars from England, New Zealand, Scotland, and of course Australia, Richard Hay. Yep, good dice going off the second and third place between Neil Dunn and uh, Peter Hopwood as Dennis Welsh came over the top sideways. It's very much a trademark of his driving style. Chris Dimmick also joined us in commentary, a man largely responsible for the appearance of the, the Healy cars at Mount Panorama this weekend. You were telling us before they jumped in this race that um, Welsh, the Englishman, will tend to spend most of his time driving sideways. Yes, he's a very exciting driver to watch. Um, four and a half inch rims and uh, FIA compliant tyres. Uh, the only way he reckons he can get the Healy round the corner is to pick it up and throw it by the scruff of the neck, neck at the corner. Well, he's certainly doing that. In fact, he was practicing off the line. Oh, here we go. Lock it up. Throw it. You said it. He's drifting through that corner for sure. And uh, you can tell how narrow those uh, wheels are on four and a half inch rims. Well, the big Heelys do have fairly special handling characteristics as well. They, uh, when you turn them into the corner, they seem to want to go straight. And the moment you get the front to bite, they want to swap ends on you, sir. I wonder why that is. But they were first introduced, as you know, Richard, with only a four-cylinder engine and uh, lovingly known as the 104. And then uh, about five years later went to the 106 and then ultimately to the three-liter version, which uh, was very much and very popular in America. I'll take a look through the field here, and not only the big Healy's in this race, also the little ones, the little Austin Healy Sprites, Mark ones. <laughs> oh, dice is going on everywhere there. Unexpected off-road excursion as we uh, pan back through the field. Rob Rowland heading uh, Warren James there. Peter Hopwood trying to go around the outside of Neil Dunn. Well, Hopwood's had plenty of experience up here. He's been involved in all the Bathurst 12-hour races, so he's got plenty of laps under his belt. He'll know the line that he's aiming for. Whether his car will respond for him may be another factor, but uh, certainly harassing uh, the second-place man, Neil Dunn, at the moment. But our leader is out in front, number one, Dennis Welsh, and uh, obviously wants to take uh, Australian laurels back to Europe with him as well to add to the history of this of his success. Hardy Khan's off. That's a rally replica. Hardy Khan from Victoria's uh, parked it for the day by the looks of it. Started from position 12 on the grid. Bad luck for him. We should also mention that this year marks the 100th anniversary of Donald Mitchell Healy's birth. The man that gave this fabulous car to the world. Something uh, that motoring enthusiasts are very passionate about. The Austin Healy's. And Welsh, the race leader, leading already by three seconds. Thank you very much.
uh, doing it very nicely. And uh, Healy is very revered in, in England, David. He, he certainly uh, was one of those almost not quite in the same league as Colin Chapman, but uh, a fellow that uh, put his own hands together, an engineer, made his own cars, uh, and uh, got the regard of a lot of people. And fortunately for him, from a commercial point of view, Austin Company uh, talked him into a liaison, into a, uh, perhaps I better use another word, uh, a, a, an organization, and uh, the Austin Healey became uh, instantly famous around the world. It was very, very popular in America, and uh, a lovely car in, in its day, and I think uh, any car that still looks good 30 or 40 years later uh, must have had something going for it. Through to Hopwood in car 20. That's the man you're looking at across the top of the mountain, currently running third. Alan Moffat has already mentioned that he's uh, had vast experience at Mount Panorama. He's really driven everything from HQs to touring cars. Yes, he is. Back up front, we run down Conrod Strait. The Englishman, Dennis Welsh. Some remarkable statistics. He's uh, won 58 of 60 races, I believe. In two seconds. Which makes him uh, the man of Austin Healy Racing throughout Europe. And very quick through there on the approach. Look at the gap. He's opened up already. I wouldn't mind Benny. He stretched it in excess of three seconds now as they come across the line shortly to complete their second lap. All of these engines would be uh, beautifully balanced, of course, and, and blueprinted. Well, look at the fellow had trouble last car. time, and uh, he's uh, still doing it. Car 29. It's Richard Carter. Richard Carter driving the X-Ross bomb car. Just see the silver sprite of George Forbes. He's right in with the 3000s. So history dating back to 1954 at Mount Panorama. At the end of the second racing lap, a little bit of fender leaning going on now. Welsh, in fact, has reduced his lead now to 2.6 seconds. So Dunn is gradually eating away at the lead. Well, we know one thing. Oh, no. <laughs> they wouldn't have had the luxury of a superb circuit in the condition that it is today in 1954. In fact, they're probably lucky to have had bitumen all the way around. But uh, these fellows would be feeling absolutely ecstatic here today to be on uh, Australia's most famous and greatest racetrack. And they'll go home with some told stories uh, after this race. Still Welsh leading Dunn and Peter Hopwood. Roland runs fourth on the racetrack. Ahead of James, Warren James, the Victorian, who uh, would be satisfied with his progress after starting from position nine. Gee, there's more smoke than you'd see. It's Richard Carter Richard. still locking up brakes there. Yeah. And oh. still looking for a way past Freestone oh. in front of him there. They're sending out smoke signals or something at the top of the mountain. <laughs> Comanches have arrived. If he gets much closer, it'll be more than... Uh, smoke signals. Keep I an hope eye. he doesn't decide to touch him. Well, keep an eye too on the little sprite behind, just 1275cc. Oh, hello, arms in the air. Somebody's gone off, have they? Yep. For the telltale smoke. Green flag to signal their pass, whatever. And look at the little sprite on the back there. 1275cc A-series engine and uh, now it'll really start to pull under the tail of the bigger Heelys as they come down the mountain. He wasn't waving to his family, was he? <laughs> I was talking to George yesterday and he said he's rev limited to 9,000 revs in that little silver bar guy. Uh, I don't think it's quite the same way as it came out of the factory no. originally. They, they had a, I think it's eight, 948 cc A series engine with, a, yes. well, not a lot of horsepower, that's for sure. Yep. Greg Forbes in car number 55, the Sprite, Mark 1. And now the drag down Conrod Strait once again. I imagine that the head would get something of a workout from uh, an aerodynamic point of view, or lack of, yes. of the, the cars without roofs, particularly going down Conrod. The alternative is to have the windscreen on the thing, which is a bit like a barn door. Sure. Subject themselves to uh, fairly significant G-forces. And here they are coming into uh, Caltex Chase. They're certainly not slow. No, I don't imagine there would have been too much lifting uh, through the right-hander. And watch that. It, when you say he throws it around, Chris, he certainly does. Uh, most of the cars in the field are running six-inch rims against uh, Dennis Welsh's four and a half. So he's certainly uh, handicapping himself, but he loves to throw it around. Uh, Armfuls of opposite lock. Three laps completed. Two to go for Dennis Welsh as he works his way now back up Mountain Strait. 
He's gone something like a second quicker on that lap. Now leads by three and a half seconds to Peter Hopwood, who uh, will give this his best shot. A couple of laps for Hopwood to reel in the race leader. Does anyone give him a hope? We've, we've lost Neil Dunn. Yeah, I have a feeling that smoke that we saw at the top of the mountain may well have been Neil Dunn. So Peter Hopwood coming now through uh, Volvo Bend and uh -oh, one of the dogs. Had a little, uh, a little swerve coming out of Murray's corner onto the straight. Must have got himself out of shape. Had a spin. He, he, he failed to start on the grid. He can't start the car again, I'd say. Yeah. He's doing the right thing, getting it out of harm's way. And back up onto the top of the mountain on the approach to AMP Bend. Second place man there, Peter Hopwood. It's great to see Peter Hopwood back in a Healy. He started his racing career in an Austin Healy in 1972 at club level. If you wonder why uh, that they're both red with a white roof and most of the cars seem to look like that. In their day, that was the colour of the works cars, which were particularly noted for their performances in rallying. That's right, and uh, we've actually got one of the cars in the field is the car that Pat Moss drove in 1960. Um, and she used to second her brother occasionally to help out uh, with uh, the co-driving. Sterling Moss, I know, drove it at, uh, in the Sebring 12 hour in America with great aplomb. Also, uh, in a nice touch, Charles Matthew. We'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. There's a replay of the incident involving car number 11, Colin Dodds, the Sydney sider, who's had a less than memorable day at Bathurst, or perhaps memorable for all the wrong reasons. Well, he can replay that one. It was just ambas uh, ambitions ahead of uh, abilities there. He uh, should have held it a little, little easier. He crimped the steering wheel, and it came around on him before he knew what had happened. Gregory Prunster. Another frog eye that won't be going any further. Also having problems. I was just about to mention, gentlemen, at the completion of this race, the chequered flag will be waved by Charles Matthews, who's the Le Mans race organiser on an annual basis. And there is some tie-up, Chris, uh, in relation to this race and Le Mans, because this event was supposed to appear at Le Mans this year. That's exactly this year, right. Wasn't? Charles had put a hell of a lot of effort in. Um, we had a, uh, a race for Le Mans with 70 cars on the grid and 54 reserves from all around the world. And then, because of clashes with timing, they couldn't run the race at Le Mans. And uh, I'd been in contact with Charles and said, well, let's try and run it at Bathurst. If we can't get a race in your hemisphere, let's run it in ours. Well, still letting it all hang out across the top. Leading by 2.3 seconds, so Hopwood is reeling him in. We may have a thrilling finale here. Peter Hopwood's if slow traffic had come into play. Sorry, Peter Hopwood's had a couple of problems in practice and hasn't had as much time in the Healy on the mountain as Dennis. <laughs> Well, Dennis certainly likes this drifting style. I uh, don't care what size rims he's got on the rear. Uh, uh, if I was leading uh, with uh, only half a lap uh, to go, I don't think I'd be throwing it around that much. It's tremendous energy gets thrown into those rear tires when you drive with this style. Uh, be much more inclined to creep up on some of that oversteer. But it, obviously with the 58 wins under his belt. He knows what he's doing and he feels comfortable, but it certainly looks hairy. It's a lot of fun though, isn't it, I should think? Well, yes, fun. I never found it fun to have the rear <laughs> of the car coming out, but perhaps that might have been because drove uh, a few heavier cars around here and the nearest heat of the rear coming out was I quite... That this is fairly intentional. Yeah, Nerve-wracking, yeah, so I think we might have a little showing off here in the front, but uh, never, nonetheless, uh, a great credit to him to bring the car around the world, keep it serviced and, and running well. And uh, Chris, you uh, you will be uh, thanked by all Austin Healy aficionados around the country. I'm sure there will be a lot of people watching uh, this morning uh, that will understand uh, just how wonderful Austin Healy's really are. Yeah, and I think we've we've uh, touched some heartstrings. People remember having sprites when they were younger or big Healy's. And, uh, and speaking of sprites, uh, and the sprites aren't doing too well today. Their uh, their big brothers are holding uh, holding the candles to them. It's, that's Nick Roots from Queensland. Powered up blue bug eye. Some, so. pe some people have made amazing efforts to get here as well. A lot of the Healy drivers are club level drivers who in the last six months have managed to get international licenses. Coming up towards Murray's corner for the final time. And Dennis Welch from England with a reasonable gap over Peter Hopwood. One last opportunity to throw it sideways is that over the line he goes and receives the chequered flag. Indeed.
big win by Welsh. Very comprehensive. Hopwood was really charging home at him, but ran out of racing laps, as simple as that. Well, that was one of the more spectacular drives you'd ever see at Mount Panorama in any category. Let's now check the top five for you. Race score for the Donald Healy International Tribute. Dennis Welsh from England, Peter Hopwood in second from Sydney, then Victoria's Rob Rowland. Fourth was Richard Carter. And whipping in the top five, Paul Freestone.